working environment places like this, you have to be really careful. Every time you handle the machine, uh, threading it, whatever you're doing, you have to health and safety reason. You have to switch your machine off. Cutting, no fabric, no cotton on the floor because it's dangerous. You can step on it and it slide and fell and hurt yourself. So therefore, that is really important. Needles, pins, nothing like that. You shouldn't throw them on the floor. Every tool you use, all the tools, it has to go back. Mustn't leave scissors, a snip, a screwdriver, anything laying around. Everything you use, everything for put back. That's the most important thing to work safely in this sort of environment. And some of the problems are, if the cottons or fabric on the floor, you can step and slide and then you fell and you hurt yourself. And while you're threading the machine, if you don't switch the machine off, the machine is quite fast. By accident, if you can pass the pedal and then you can, while your hands under the machine, you can hurt your needle goes through your finger and then you can hurt yourself. And then the same is the scissors. If you hold on scissors, it's it snip. You walk around in the place, you can accidentally, you can injure someone. So therefore, that is sort of thing that we must avoid. So always you put the tools away, and when you walk around, make sure that you don't carry no scissors, nothing in your hand. The first thing is here, reverse, and stitching length dial is here. When you make the stitches bigger and smaller, you adjust the stitching length dial. This is uh, pretension, as your tension, and this is um, a spool pin that is needle bar okay, this is this is a foot then normally we got finger guard on around the foot there's the health and safety of the student that they don't because they learning so it's dangerous the needle is left it open so finger guard covers the needle and then people they can get your fingers near to it and this this is a pressure foot and then you can Put the pressure on the foot to press the foot down. If your foot is not, is not enough pressure on the foot, so the, it doesn't stitch the fabric correctly and chew the fabric. So if it's fine fabric, you put more pressure on the foot to press the fabric on there and then stitch it correctly. This is a fresh take-up cover. And this is a bob, uh, tension for the bobbin threader. You put the bobbin here and then touch this and then you fill your bobbin and you bob in, and you bob in case, and you bob in. This is four thread overlocker. We have here four, three, five, and baby locker. The principle of the threading, more or less the same. The four thread, you got two needle, and three thread got one needle. Baby locker got one needle. The five thread you got two needle, there's a bit different. The four thread you use for jersey, put them together. A three thread you use open seam, stop fraying the fabric, you do edge of it. Baby look out those finishing products, like edging, trimming, that sort of thing. But when you learn for four, and then the rest of it more easier for you to thread it. And you replace the bobbin here first and then you thread the cotton this is to the right you thread it on top your thread comes in goes in here it goes around you have to when you put this in you have to put it all the way in because if it's not tight your bobbin it doesn't do uh, cotton wrap around the bobbin really loose. If your bobbin is loose and uh, uh, 
the stitching it doesn't come out right. So this position is wrong, this position is correct. You push this back into the place. While you're doing this, always you take the needle out the cotton. Because if you don't, the cotton goes under the machine and then rub around it underneath. Take the foot up, that's the position you're ready to wind your bobbin. Switch your machine off, and then there's your bobbin. You don't overfill the bobbin, it's enough. So you need how much you need to use. Finish it, you switch your machine off. Take the bobbin out, cut your cotton, and you replace your bobbin into your bobbin case. When you hold your bobbin like this, that's it, tension is fine. If you hold it like this and bobbin drops in your hand, that means this tension of the bobbin is too loose. Around the side here, you've got a screw here, you've got a screwdriver, tighten them up a little bit, adjust the tension, and it's fine. And then replace this inside the machine. To do that, you open this. Hold your bobbin in this shape. If you don't hold this catch, if you try to do it like this, bobbin fell out. If you hold this, this position, and when you replace the bobbin in there, it doesn't fall out the case. So you press in here, and then push it. If it clicks, that means it's in. If it doesn't click, it's not in. So you have to take it out and replace it back again and then you thread the needle back. Repress the foot. You hold your cotton in your hand. Use your hand well. Go underneath, takes the cotton on, on top surface. So now you're ready to sew. Now we adjust into tension, you stitch it, and then you stitch it too, too loose, so therefore I'm tightening the stitching. The first is stitch before I adjust the tension, second is stitch after I adjust the tension. That's the wrong stitch, that's the right stitch. Okay, now we're gonna do a straight line. You got lines on your machine, and it's keep your fabric edge of your line and you keep you straight. All the way, always you keep your fabric on the edge. And then, Come out, there's your straight line. We've done our stray stitch. A spiral. You start center of your fabric. Because you're going to go around a circle, it's not easy. So first step, you do put needle one in and lift your foot up and turn it. The first circle, because such a small space, you're not going to be able to go all the way around. So you do one needle in every each time. So when we've done the first one, the second one, two needle in, lift it up, turn it. Proceed that continuously. When you circle one, second one, 
And then you do free stitch and lift it and turn. More out you go, couple of more is 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 stitches added to it. And they keep turning it, stopping, lifting and turn it. And then you will have your perfect spirals. The slower you use the machine, correct the stitching you will have. You have more control. If you put your foot down to have it, and then you don't have no control of the machine. And then you can have your spiral. Okay, when you start to curve, like always, to get the correct stitching, that's your distance. You will on your machine, you got all the one, two, three. If you keep your edge of your fabric here, all the way around, and then you stitch it really slowly, keep your fabric there, and then how you start at the end, all the way around, it does exactly the same. The most important when you stitch it, is stitch it straight. There's our curves. Okay, now we start doing the boxes. We start a little bit in because we're going to come here and turn back. It's stitch it and then stop and turn. Keep in the same position. You can keep left the needle inside while you're turning it, it makes it easier. And turn it, release your foot and come here and then you can lock it, reverse it and then a box is. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to do cut your uh, pattern fabric safely and correctly. And this is the first thing that we talk about your scissors. You always you keep your scissors in a box and on the cover. Open it, take your scissors. When you're going to cut it, don't lift your hands, don't put your hand under the fabric, don't lift the fabric. So what you have to do is you have to cut round it. Always you keep your hand away from the scissors. I'll just this way is wrong, that way is wrong. Always your hands away, so you cut round it. You put your hand on here to keep the fabric and the pattern flat together, and you can't lift it and turn it either. It just has to be. All the way around, you will cut it. Your hands away. This 
When you finish cutting, cover your scissors, put them in a box, and put your scissors away. That's your, that's your slave. Every time you use this is not really correct like this. So you use your snip, the clean, cut all the cottons. Presentation is important at your work, so therefore you have to cut it and clean it. And that is the safe way of using your snip, cutting and presenting your work nice and neat. When you open your machine, always hold it, one hand underneath, one on top, because this is really heavy. Push it down and release it. And then that's your oil. As you, as you can see, you got high and low level. So your oil mustn't go above high and mustn't go below low. It has to be in that section. If you put oil too much, as you see, the oil that takes it from here circulates and it's come back in again. If you put too much oil, it wouldn't strain, so it comes onto surface, so you make your clothes greasy. If you don't put enough oil in here, and then what happens is the machine, it doesn't, machine needs to oil circulate all the time. If it doesn't do that, the machine, it damages the machine, it sees up. So it's really important. If you use your machine often and regularly, as you can see, the oil color starts changing. So what you have to do is, all depends how often you use it. If you use it regular every single day, once a month, you open your machine. If you see the oil change color, it's getting dirty. So what you do, that's the thing here, you open it, put the bottle underneath, drain all the oil out, wipe it clean, no, you don't use water or soap, anything, just a dry cloth, wipe inside and then replace fresh oil in there again. And then that's the oil check in. And then put your hand over here and you slowly release it and close it. The first thing, before we take the needle off, we take the foot out. The reason that you have to learn how to change the foot, because if you do a zip, you have to use different foot. This is the normal stitch foot. You take that off and then you replace another foot when you need it. Now we're going to take the needle out as our needle, we take a needle out. Every each needle is broken, we have to record it for health and safety reasons. That's how we do record the needle, as you can see. The date, the needle broken, a person name, what type of machine we're using. Always, oh, this is Institution Academy. We write on the Institution Academy. Person signs it. I collect all the pieces together, and then if it's everything there, we put them there. I sign it, and it's stick on that, and keep this as a record. And then every each needle, we know how many needle we use, where the broken needle goes. When this is full, we will give the person to get discard them safely. Okay, we open the lid here, take the bobbin out. Let's take the bobbin out. That's your bobbin case. Take the bobbin case out and brush inside the bobbin case. The reason you do this, 
The fabric, all the fibre from the fabric goes under your machine, goes inside your bobbin case. In time, if you don't clean it, all different fabric, all different colours, fibres piles up inside your case. Because the oil circulates it, the, all the fibres become like mud dirt. So the cotton collects it, comes on the surface of the fabric while you're stitching. So therefore, it's important to clean them every couple of weeks. Now we're going to open the needle plate. The same reason we're doing this is as we clean the bobbin. The fibres goes between and even if you're using a different colour uh, fabric, the fibre builds up underneath between the teeth of the machine. And then if you put different colour, if you put red and then you use white after, it stains your fabric. So therefore, you open this, you take that out, all inside you brush it, clean everything. As you see, you've got some cotton in here. Clean them all out, just make sure everything nice and clean. And then put everything back together after. And then you replace everything back in the place. So now I'll demonstrate how we're going to thread the overlocker. Five thread is a woven fabric. So you open the hatch here, you press the button here, opens up. Lever, you pull the lever, that's your foot out the way and there's your machine ready for you to thread it. The threading goes up here and then comes down from, from here. Yeah? You must thread it that way because if you do it straight across, it wouldn't work. The cotton, it doesn't flow, it doesn't come easily. Okay, first I'll start from needle.
Just to clarify. But it's also not special to you, so. needle one and for the second needle This is the second needle.
Now we're going to demonstrate how if you stitches too tight while you're doing overlocking and then I will show you how to adjust your overlocker. This too is a needle so is it too tight you open it a little bit and check your stitch is correct. If you see it's pulling a bit so there's a needle, there's two stitches needle, so you have to open a bit more. And test it again. As you see now, the tension is correct. This is pulling. Adjust the tension, release it. Let's take the correct stitch. Straight lines. Let's do wavy edges. Mm -hmm. 